Now, in the past few days, 17 trucks have been set ablaze in three different provinces. Seven trucks were torched on the N3 at Van Rienen's Pass in KwaZulu-Natal, with another five trucks set alight on the N4 in Mpumalanga over the weekend. It's not the first time that trucks have been targeted, and the Hawks are now investigating what appears to be coordinated attacks earlier. And just like that, this guy was easily identified. Uh, the guy in the video, the one who's doing this senseless crime, he did a video a week before he did the senseless crime. So in the video that he did a week before this crime, it's a video of him in his own truck, not his own truck. He's actually a truck, a truck driver as well. So he did a video there. And then... Fast forward, that video was then linked with the video from the footage. So here's the picture from the video that he took himself. In assessing the two pictures, uh, the picture on the left is the picture from the video he took himself. And then on the right, it's a picture captured from the footage itself. So now, when you check properly or when you assess the two pictures, you can see that the beard alignment is the same in both pictures. So this was easy. It was very easy. But then even though the police took time to arrest this guy, it took about three days. And he's in police custody awaiting for his court appearance. Uh, with regards to the crime that he did, which is the torching of uh, these trucks, and he was not alone, even though he's the only one that's caught so far, that's been caught so far, Hopefully he leads uh, to more arrests. Um, with regards to the crime that he did, a lot of companies and employers have lost tremendous amounts due to his actions, his and his friends' actions. So here's what one employer of one of the trucks that was banned had to say. One of our trucks was burned down between um, uh, MLO and Petritif on its way to go to the port to go and offload uh, one of our coal. And uh, I'm quite sure you can see the picture on your, on your screen. Mm -hmm. And thank God uh, that we said that at least uh, the driver was taken out and uh, is unharmed. And then they bend down the truck up to the, uh, up to the ground. And uh, it's a brand new truck, which we got it last month which is uh, less than 5,000 kilometers on it. I mean, it pains me mm. as the owner of the business uh, that we have been had to be subjected to this as African or black South African who is employing 20 uh, South Africans. Um, and you can multiply that by 10. You can assume that how many people that we are employing as a business. Um, so we don't know why this, is, uh, this has taken place. Because we are not employing any foreigners, we are employing 20 South Africans um, who are feeding their family. I'm a South African as well, child of a, a former domestic worker mm. and a farm worker uh, during the apartheid years. I've rebuilt my life to be where it is, but unfortunately it's sad that my own people are the one that are uh, um, taking food away from my, f my family, my children, and those that are employed. It hurts me. Um, and um, this nonsense of this criminality must come to an end. And uh, it's perpetrated by, uh, by our own people. Uh, that is why I've taken a decision that I must come on live and uh, indicate this thing. We are not faceless, South African. We are not just numbers. We are not just statistics. I'm a black South African. Uh, from George, who grew up in a farm, 
yeah. who has worked hard to be where I am and creating jobs. So when you uh, speak to your staff members, I mean, uh, you know, uh, obviously the truck driver, I assume you're going to uh, just uh, let him stay at home for a couple of uh, days just so he uh, also uh, goes through the trauma that uh, um, he went through and tries to deal with that. But uh, the rest of your drivers, about 19 of them, if you say there's 20, what are they telling you when you meet them about what's happening? Aren't they probably saying, look, boss, we can't go out in the street. We're too scared to be attacked as well. I had to, this morning, I had to, uh, you know, um, give an instruction to my team to say all the, all of our trucks that are all of our running South Africa, they, all of them, they must go to the nearest police station and stop there until all this madness that is caused by our own people. Uh, it's not caused by foreigners. It's not caused by white people or Chinese. It's caused by African people, uh, black people like me, who have suffered under apartheid. And unfortunately, uh, um, uh, it's important that we need to make sure that their safety comes first. So now that means that we are losing money instead of taking the call to the port and earning um, you know, dollars for this country and be able to feed and try to reduce the unemployment rate that is sitting at close to about 70, I mean, close to about 50%. And 70% of our of youth and majority of the people that were employing are youth people, are, are young people, uh, which are also facing, you know, tremendous unemployment of almost 70% in this country. It's sad. Mm. Um, so it should not be happening. Yeah. Mm. I'm sorry to interject, Bongani. Um, so the uh, soldiers being deployed to strategic roads or routes, uh, at the moment they're on the N3 at the Moy Plaza. Does that give you any comfort? No, it gives me some comfort, but um, unfortunately, they are more reactive than uh, uh, this is more, uh, this is less preventative. I think to me, uh, our intelligence community must play a much more proactive uh, a role and make sure that we, in all words in this country, we need to have people who are going to gather intelligence because these people are known in the communities unknown in each and every word. These people talk to various people, and these people must help us, help the government, help the South African economy uh, to make sure that these people are identified and apprehended before uh, we have a loss of about 2.7 million rand of an asset, uh, which now needs to be paid by the insurance, which is also not a solution because, I mean, it's going to increase. Mm. our cost of insurance uh, over a period of time. So um, we, are, we welcome the initiative that has been taken by government, but I believe more needs to be done by the, our intelligent communities. Mm. They must focus more on each and every word to make sure that we've got people that are going to get at the intelligent mm. so that we can try to prevent this from happening because it's hurting the economy. It's coming at a very wrong time where all of our infrastructure for export uh, is totally on a standstill uh, because of the unfortunate things that are happening at Transnet with the non-availability mm -hmm. of locomotives that are not working, which is hurting our country. Yeah, and you have to rely and, on uh, freight. Uh, we need to rely on trucks. I mean, I mm -hmm. had to buy these trucks precisely to make sure that we continue and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. sending our coal to the port so that we can continue export as an yeah. export company. That was well spoken from the owner, but uh, I feel like he didn't want to show too much emotions, but he was going through a lot cause uh, it's actually painful to lose uh, such a big amount and, and an asset. So now uh, this is happening all because of this guy with his friends, what they did. But now this, I feel like there's more to it. A lot of people do know that it's more to it. There's more to it. Uh, than just torching of trucks or it could be like a, a plan of terrorism acts across South Africa but then the government needs to act by the government I mean like the officials people who South Africa is voting for so South Africa needs to act big time and yeah the country can be saved if that happens but they will have to show an example with this guy so 
drop your opinions in the comment section and let us know what do you think about this main problem that we're facing in south africa how can it be solved how can it be stopped how can it be prevented from happening in the future yeah like comment subscribe as well to grow the channel